wanted to be the security guy. He claimed he was a security guy. Security Guy Radio. What's your name? Thank you very much. I'm Alex Dorton with Sickler. Lee Coffee with Data Gear. So what does Sickler do? We're a wireless company, so we manufacture wireless point to point radios in the millimeter wave space. We distinguish radio from the Wi Fi. That's different than the Wi Fi signal. Right, we're, we're very much point to point, and we, we say we're like fiber like wireless, if you like. So we're uh, an augmentation to and an extension, if you like, of a fiber network. So if a customer oh. wants to run data from point A and point B, they don't have fiber. Right. Uh, one sure. option, uh, an alternative, if you like, of extending the fiber is to use wireless. Okay. And we provide that capability with, with our wireless communication and providing the same type of performance that they'd expect from a, a fiber link. The same performance? Right. In terms of capacity, right. speed, uh, reliability, in terms of availability as fiber. Now, is that really more of a commercial application for cities and things? And, um, you know, my kids aren't getting on Facebook with this thing. Uh, but if they did, they would be like on steroids, right? As someone who wants uh, high capacity, typically speaking, you yeah. know, I mean, so we do up to two gigabits per second. So it's pretty high capacity. <laughs> I need that in my house. Editing these videos takes a long time. <laughs> it takes four hours to upload something to, to YouTube. Right. Well, certainly uh, gigabit to the home is, is one market we're actually, you know, involved in as well. Um, but also, you know, there's the commercial, industrial, you know, government, you mentioned right. uh, public safety is also a very large market for us. Uh, you know, video surveillance in cities, for example, where they do need the capacity. Uh, now, I wondered about that. So, you know, I live in Burbank, right? We have, we have a pretty good Wi-Fi, public Wi-Fi for Burbank, right? But that's not really robust. This is completely different. I mean, this is, this is going to keep infrastructure running at this level, whereas a typical Wi-Fi in the restaurant's not anything like this. Right. I mean, the big difference is typical Wi-Fi in a restaurant doesn't need the same level of availability and reliability as the Wi-Fi right. we do. Because with the Wi-Fi we do, we're more of an infrastructure provider, if you like. And you know, how do you keep it so robust? What's the, what distinguishes this staying up and maintaining high levels from a typical network? Yeah, the key thing is the, the, the frequency that we run in, if you like, the frequencies that we use, which is not uh, typical. Your, your typical Wi-Fi or your cellular is a sub-6 gigahertz frequency. So we play in the what's called the millimeter wave frequencies, which are 60, 70, and 80 gigahertz. Uh, and these are completely underutilized and they're congestion free. So you're not going to get any problems with interference or wireless connections dropping because of interference from other wireless. I'm networks. glad you used the word congestion. Um, I got my GoPro, we talked about this, right? When I go in a public area, I can't, and I'm, I'm three inches from my phone, so I can see my image on my phone from my GoPro, it, it picks up other signals and chokes and says I'm not gonna work and it gets temperamental, right? What is the problem in congestion? Are we, are we at that point now where you know we don't have much bandwidth, we don't have much storage, we're growing so fast that it's hard to keep up with that? Is that what's happening? Yeah, I mean, that's a very typical situation in a city urban kind of environment where there's a lot of wireless uh, communications going on, wireless networks, and a lot of them are interfering with each other. Uh, so you may have a connection today, but tomorrow you may not have it. You know, you may have a connection today, you don't have a control of what's going in tomorrow and could disrupt your wireless network. Now, because we operate at a high frequency, you know, the 60, 70, 80 gigahertz, no one is operating at that, that frequency, at least not in the, the, the Wi-Fi area. So we don't have any problems with someone else coming in and interfering with our, with our uh, wireless, if you like. So why aren't they operating that, at that level? Let me Maybe. ask you this. Let me boil it down to something more mundane. Because you use the word radio, right? So could we think of a radio station that has, you know, station 10 over here and station 1090 on the left, and there's that range of frequencies for radios that allow you to have micro adjustments on your dial to pick up those, those, those stations, right? Have we just started at the lower bandwidths and the lower frequencies for Wi-Fi, and now there's things at the, at the mega level that other people could use, and you guys just said, hey, why don't we do it? And you're, you're taking lean on that, it sounds like. Yeah. So the, the, the main reason is millimeter wave uh, wireless, the, the, the technology we operate in is very uh, directional. It's very narrow beams. It's not designed to be kind of like, you know, wide radio disbursement. 
um, that you, you need with Wi-Fi because obviously having the multiple users, where you know, which is why we call it fiber-like wireless because it is point to point, is very directional. Okay, that's interesting. Now back when I was in the studio, I thought we used a microwave transmitter to send these beams and connections and things uh, when we need it. Was, is that old technology? That's how they used to do it? Yeah, that's that's how, they, I mean, it's still prevalent today. There's a lot of those types of systems around. The, the problem with a lot of the microwave technologies is the, the licenses are quite expensive. There's one, you know, disadvantage if you like. They're also quite large and heavy, so very bulky. Right. And, you know, not very aesthetically pleasing, particularly in like a, an urban environment where it needs to blend into the surroundings. You know, uh, the millimeter wave technology, because of the, the, the type of technology is that we use, uh, is very small form factor. So it's, you know, aesthetically is not displeasing and it, it fits in very well into the uh, urban environment. It makes a nice uh, finch perch, because that's how big it is, that's actual that's size. Right. That is, that that's right, that is an actual size uh, up there. It's, it's roughly <laughs> six inch by six inch in diameter. Actually, this is larger than uh, real life, you know. Yeah, 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 that's amazing. And that'll, that'll handle what kind of capacity. So, but if you could, for a viewer that doesn't understand some of this stuff, but I might be one of them, by the way, uh, what would that small little box be able to handle as far as an application, uh, a network, you know, it would be 100 computers at the corporation, what would, what would that do? Right, so this is 60 gigahertz radio, which is license free, so there's no license required. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, which it makes it a lot easier from you know right. a, a deployment point of view. Uh, it's actually a gigabit per second radio, half duplex, which basically means uh, gigabit aggregated, so you can send and transmit up to a gigabit, you know, worth of data in terms of speed. What application might that be used in? You don't have to company names, but maybe a type yeah. of company. I mean, applications uh, can be like a video, video surveillance, security cameras, for example. You okay. know, uh, but not only that, I mean, you could put any kind of uh, IP data over it. I mean, it's really an extension to your IP network. Oh, interesting. So it could be, I mean, it could be internet, it could be local area <coughs> network. Right. Other types of security, access control, you know, whatever you want to put on, on there. It's basically transparent pipe, so you can run multiple things over there as well, including Wi-Fi. Now, are you the manufacturer? Correct. Yeah, the, we were the, the manufacturer, the designer, and that's yeah, we, we we do the, all the uh, engineering, the, the manufacturing, etc. And, and we work with companies like Data Gear, you know, one of our uh, uh, integrators, uh, to actually deploy the systems, you know, with the end user. So, Mr. Data Gear, let's talk about integration. You asked me just a couple of words to sum up everything we do, right? Uh, I think you can. You, you have that background. Uh, it's funny. I've been I've been talking to everybody today, and integration has come up in every single interview, right? So. You know, when we had the tin can on the wire, that was kind of great in a way because you couldn't compromise everybody's tin can wire. They were separated. They were, you know, not put together. And there's an advantage to being on a network. But when you integrate my SAP and my HR and my video and my access control systems, and now it's on one network, and I'm the bad guy hacker, uh, that's a problem, right? Because if you compromise that, you're compromising the whole thing. So I talk to manufacturers who say, you know, once I ship my camera and I put my password zero and password on it, that's not my problem anymore. The integrator now has to figure out, and, and it, the integrator knows this, how to change the password on the camera, let's say, right? But then when he leaves, if he doesn't maintain the relationship with the, with the client, the client's not gonna change that password, they're gonna forget about it, things happen, things go down. So integration, and the person now that's integrator is really more important than the sales guy. It's really, it's stepped into a different role, I think. Because my, my sales guy doesn't know the technology, and my integrator leaves, and he's not telling me to keep maintaining the system and you know upgrades and check it, everything's going to fall apart eventually. So tell us why this type of technology is so specific for an integrator and, and what type of integrator needs to know about it. Well, this is very specific because it's unique in what it does. It's the amount of, of data it'll move through it, the bandwidth, and to a certain degree, the package size. So you're taking that giant microwave dish that you see on top of the mountaintop, right. and you shrunk it down into this little guy here, where now you can put this on um, you know, light pole someplace, and you can move the data through that, back and forth. So um, to quantify what this is doing, this would be like having 10 Starbucks full of people on one side, taking that data, moving it through the air to someplace else, to the, to the backbone of the internet. Right. So that's what this product is doing. It's doing it securely. Um, it's got a small package, and it's unique. Um, we chose them because they're unique in what they do. There's nothing else like this out there. 
And as far as the security part of it, that's the, the other thing. We're doing a lot with um, high security areas like ports, rails, that type of stuff. I'm glad to hear that because I've been to some ports doing security checks and I'm a little bit disappointed oh, in, don't say in what's that. going on. Uh, don't not say your that. port, I'm sure. I'm sure it's not your port. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's, it's a growing thing too. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, things it's are always moving around. Constantly changing, changing. Yeah. ports are unique, um, whether you know, you could be doing a port on the East Coast, it could be self-contained, where you've got to go through a front gate and everything's behind it. A lot of the ports here, they kind of meander in and out of of towns and cities and stuff, so it's very difficult to And then the Coast Guard has a different standard for each particular business inside the port, because if you can't afford this, uh, 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 then you don't have to have it. You, know, you they, don't have to, but but they, they're really well knit together. I mean, one yeah. of the things they are doing, if you've been to some of these things, they're learning how to, to move information back and forth to each other, exchange information, and work together. And again, that's what this does, whether it be video surveillance, whether it be physical surveillance, opening gates, closing gates, sensors that are out there that are detecting people that shouldn't be there, or vehicles that shouldn't be there. Um, it, all this stuff sucks up a lot of data. Yep, right. And it has to be reliable. That's the other thing. Uh, being a tele, telegrade type of equipment there, it has to be reliable. And as we all know, the worst things happen at the worst times. Right. And this stuff just works, and it has to be that way. And that's so since this thing. is a brand new product, and it's really, uh, you know, kind of, in, it's an innovation, really. Right. Your, your integrators, are, kind of, are you kind of like a distributor in a way? And we're a true integrator, which, uh, I guess you ask me, what do we do? We make that work, simple as that. Right. They, you get that, go make it work. But Make since it it's so whatever. unique, you have to have specific integrators. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> They're kicking us out. Oh, well, that's all right. That's all right. That's okay. It'll be the first time I got kicked out of a place. <laughs> uh, so I'm just trying to figure We're out not the even process. Drinking. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, typically I have like, you know, here's a manufacturer, then you got a sales rep that goes out and sells things, and the sales guy sells it to the end user, and the end user says, uh, how do I make this whole thing work? And they, they call it the local camera guy, and he puts it in, and he leaves, and you never see him again, right? Exactly. Can't do that anymore. Everything's different now. You have to have a different process. I was kind of wondering what that step process is. It's a very special skill set. I mean, this is right. very technical equipment. Um, you also have to have a sense of this. I mean, you kind of hit it on the head when you said, you know, this is a radio. Yeah, this is a radio. It works just like radios have worked since right. Marconi invented this stuff. But there's very, there's very specifics on it. Uh, very unique things to it. The security levels, how to set it up, how to integrate it into the existing system. There's multitudes of security packages out there. Um, so it is quite unique and you've got to do that or it's a worthless piece of metal. Now, <laughs> how new is this? This particular product here that you know we're referring to um, is about a year old, so it's, it's fairly new uh, in terms of uh, you know products, uh, product -like technology. Uh, Ciclo has been around as a company for a, around seven years. Uh, so seven, okay. Seven, yeah. Um, our, our initial products were 70, 80 gigahertz, which are, which are longer range. They have a range of uh, roughly up to about two miles, uh, and you know those products we're still developing and and, and you know very strong uh, and providing you know uh, particularly backhaul type of communication. Right. Uh, and now we're actually um, sending up to two gigabits per second in terms of data, in terms of capacity. With What's the range radios. on this? The newest stuff. Uh, this is this is designed as a uh, kind of a short haul radio, an edge based radio. Uh, so this is around a third of a mile. So it's you know designed for like city surveillance type thing. Yeah, or, or corporate or environment, maybe big building. campus. Yeah, building building yeah. campus kind of thing where you know parking lots, things like that. Um, so it's more of an edge based product, if you like. Uh, amusement parks. Right, anything like that. Hundreds really. of cameras, right? Yeah, there, yeah. All right, so I was talking to another integrator about that issue where there was like you know 400 cameras on a system, and when they went through it. This place was so old, been around so long, that they had a Pelco PTZ from 1984, and they had uh, Vivotech's brand new, you know, pinhole 360 camera, like something. But they were able to, with their, it's 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 a management system for video, right? Yeah. They were able to uh, hook those all together, make them work with the software using the using the proper driver manufactured by the camera, right? And so they have a they have a driver. What do you call it? Not the default driver. It was like the uh, open source driver. Yeah, the, like there's, cameras a, make there's an industry like standard for cameras. There you go, something like that. Yeah. yeah, and I was I was amazed that they could wire an old camera together with a brand new camera and kind of make it all work. You take the analog output, you go to an IP, then you plug in the network. But what you're missing on that that whole story is is the quality of the video. I mean, you go well, to a right. lot of places that have been around for a long time, and the video you're getting is like watching I Love Lucy. Yeah. I mean, and and 
you can't get any more throughput through it because of the backbone. When you go to something like this, it allows you to get the throughput through, which gives you higher resolution, more frames per second. Even on an older camera, it uh, you, it. Yes, you can. Yeah, you, yeah. can you can turn it up as high as you can. There's only so much you can do, right. but you got to have enough throughput to get that through to start doing things, whether it be facial recognition, license plate recognition. You're not going to do that by running very low speed. And a lot of these places that seem to be sophisticated from the outside, you go behind them, and that's what you got. Someone looks like I love Lucy. I see that a lot. It's interesting. <laughs> when I design stuff for the, the campus environments, uh, they always pick a camera up in the corner, right? And they shoot it down so I, I, I know who's bald. If they're tall, I can see the bald spots. And I get a little pinhead. It's useless in court, right? I'm, so I'm giving you my cop perspective. That is useless to identify somebody in court. And by the way, I just happen to know my laptop's stolen because it's not here. So I don't need a picture of you walking out the door that I can't identify. And I went to a door camera, it was you know, right at the light switch level, and we'd walked out your head, filled up the whole camera. Uh, but it's amazing, I, and those were the installers, right? Those guys weren't integrators. They don't they care. Want a cam they don't care. They, they don't want a care. camera stuck in there and they're going to send you the bill and that's the deal, right? Exactly, yeah. exactly. And I, I said, I talked to you, my thing is, what you're going to get is a guy who's about five foot five in a gray hoodie and baggy pants. That's true. That's yeah. what you're going to get. Yeah. And, and you're going to get enough video just to be able to watch it back and forth and piss yourself off. Because you <laughs> saw right. that guy break into happens. my building, whatever. That's right. But there's nothing, unless you can get a face and a license plate, it is worthless. Right. Now, how do you clear integrators? This is a very specific product, specific application, they got to go to uh, Ciclu school and uh, get cleared and standardized and all that stuff? Yeah, I mean, one of, the, one of the nice things about this product as well, to be honest, it is very easy to install, you know, it, it doesn't, you know, need a, a lot of uh, technical uh, ability. I mean, Well, the physical be, side, I get it, but then there's the, you know, yeah. behind I mean, the scenes, you, you the IP address, be, uh, all that stuff, yeah. Getting it into the to the, your customer system. Right. Yeah, you need to be a network engineer. You need to have, you know, the capability like data gear of being able to put a, you know, a, a video, IP video network together. And, you know, certainly not all the integrators have that kind of you Now, know, where are you guys located? Um, well, our US office is in New Jersey. Uh, a lot of so stuff comes out of New Jersey. It's security. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know a lot of You've crime. You've been in New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that makes a lot of sense. We've been the, in the, the company is based in out of Israel. That's where our headquarters is. Oh, interesting. In okay. Engineering and manufacturing things like that. You know, they even the smart car back in the day. Say that again. They sorry? Direct, uh, it, Israel, not Israel, the country, running I mean, people in there invented the, the little direct TV smart car back in the day. Oh, okay. That's where that technology came from. Yeah, I mean, a lot of technology. Yeah, a lot of good stuff comes out of there. Yeah. yeah. But, but we, we sell uh, globally. Yeah. You know, uh, we, we got, uh, you know, partners, distributors uh, all around the world. Um, and, you know, uh, security is also one of our, our key growth markets as well as, you know, gigabit to the home. We're very strong in the telecommunications uh, market. And we really see a, a big demand uh, for this type of technology in video surveillance because we talked about the capacity, right. the uncongestion. Now, side. a large, you know, a billionaire estate might have this kind of stuff too. They would use that kind of thing. Right. Exactly. Our business here. What's, uh, what's an entry point on something like this for a price? From a price point of view, yeah. Um, in terms of MSRP, prices range from around forty-five hundred dollars up to about ten thousand um, dollars. It know, seems pretty price. reasonable. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I mean, from a throughput point of view, you know, capability, and uh, from a reliability capability. I mean, I mean, if you're comparing it, you know, what else is, is out there? If you like, right. uh, you know, it's it's very good price point. And also, from a total cost of ownership point of view, and the reliability is extremely high. Uh, it's it's a very good value. For Any military applications? Um, Yes, absolutely. I mean, we, we do do work uh, in that kind of area, if you like. Also, you can't go into That's the, all you need to say. Details. That kind of area. That's right. That's all I want to know. <laughs> yeah. now, and where's Data Gear located? Santa Ana, California. Santa Ana. Lovely Santa Ana, California. Well, it is a lovely. It, it is. It is. Be Come nice down and see us sometime. Oh, I, I try to drive through there as fast as I can, actually. But no, I actually interviewed the chief of uh, the school district down there. Super smart guy. The Santa Ana School District Police. Uh, Super smart guy, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm hook, hook putting up a to lot see of it. money into the high schools and stuff. Yeah, yeah I'm just kidding. It's it's a uh, it's just LA. Everybody in LA is the same. It's cool. All right, well, guys, thanks for coming. It's really been interesting. I think this is really really fascinating stuff, and uh, I'm going to get this out of my show, and I'll I'll send you the link, and uh, let's let's uh, let's go sell it. Right, we appreciate That's really it. Cool. Chuck. Thank you very much. Thank and you, when I get four thousand bucks, I'm going to put one in my house because my goddamn <laughs> ATT internet never works. I got to tell you. Oh. All right, thanks thank for coming you. on the thank show. You. Thank you.